Hey, I'm Carl Interno. And I'm Josh Vitale. And we're covering football for the Diamondback this season. We figured that since the season's about to kick off Saturday against William and Mary, that we'd have a quick little season preview for you guys. So, last season, obviously, didn't start out that great with Randy Edsel. Yep, Edsel comes in for his first year after coaching UConn for a while. 2-10 uh, and 10 record, loses Danny O'Brien uh, to a transfer to Wisconsin at the end of the season. 12 more players transferred after that. And overall, it was just not how Coach Edsel wanted to start his, his tenure at Maryland. Overall, the attendance wasn't strong last year. Uh, most notably against Boston College, uh, they announced the attendance is about 25,000 fans, but you could see in the stadium that there were at least 40,000 empty seats. Uh, it goes along with the struggles the athletic department is having, and uh, football not selling tickets definitely doesn't help their, their progress. But heading into this season, definitely seemed like Ed Solo had kind of learned from a lot of the missteps last season. It seemed like he was starting to come to into his own. He seemed a lot more open. He was not giving the same coach speak answers he always gave last season. And, you know, it, the changes have really been everywhere. I mean, the new turf field, the new understated Maryland Pride uniforms this season. Um, and, you know, I, you could tell he, he was willing to touch upon the fact that last year had growing pains, but he wasn't making any excuses, as always. And he was he was looking towards the future, and it seemed like there really was new energy. But as is the Maryland curse over the last couple of years, uh, once things start to go well, they start taking a couple steps back as well. Uh, C.J. Brown uh, a couple weeks ago tore his ACL out for the season, uh, and that's just one of the long laundry list of injuries that have uh, befell the team. Uh, there's 11 players currently going to miss at least the first game. Two C.J. Brown and defensive end Andre Monroe are out for the year. Uh, safety Matt Robinson will miss the opener. Uh, linebacker Kenny Taysom missed the first couple of games. So even when things start to go right, the Terps can't just seem to get everyone on the field. And that's brought a lot of youth onto the team. Uh, there'll be six freshman starters against William and Mary on Saturday. And overall, 22 freshmen are listed on the two deep depth chart. Obviously, um, the loss of CJ Brown and all that youth, the expectations aren't going to be high, but there are plenty of storylines to, to definitely follow this season. Um, I th obviously, the main one being the youth, and going along with that, I think Perry Hills is going to be really interesting to see how he does against William and Mary on Saturday. True freshman, not even highly touted uh, out of high school. Actually, he was a bigger wrestling recruit out of uh, Pittsburgh Central Catholic High School than he was uh, than he was football. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does. Uh, he's been getting rave reviews from the coaching staff. He's really seemed to command the huddle in practice and seems very poised for a freshman. Uh, C.J. Brown uh, was a playmaker. He did he could run the ball. But Hills has shown he's a good pocket passer, and he can run the ball as well. He showed that a lot in spring practice. Uh, Coach Edsel's talked about his ability to run the ball from the pocket. It'll be a drop-off in the terms of inexperience, obviously taking his first college snap on Saturday. But... Um, Overall, it shouldn't be that far of a drop off from C.J. Brown. One, one thing I do expect to be impressed with um, on Saturday is the play of Stephon Diggs. I was at uh, the first public scrimmage last week, uh, that, the Fan Appreciation Day scrimmage, and Stephon Diggs had three touchdowns. One was off a kick return, one was off a punt return, one was off a pass from, from Perry Hills, and he seems to be operating at a different level than the rest of the team, to be honest. His speed is unparalleled. He, you can see why he was a top 10 recruit out of high school. You can see why he was the biggest recruit Maryland's had in the last five years. Um, and so I'm excited to see how he does. I think the big thing for him is just getting the ball from Perry Hills. Hopefully Hills can, can, can do that. But even if, he, even if Hills does struggle, I expect uh, digs to have an impact just in the special teams game. Another young guy that I expect to have a major impact this season is Brandon Ross. Um, Randy Etzel, kind of in a surprising turn of events, named him the opening day starter above uh, Justice Pickett, who had a lot of experience last season. You're looking back at last year, uh, the most interesting thing about Edsel's first year was the fact that he came in after running a pro-style offense at UConn, having a lot of top rushers, Donald Brown, Jordan Todd Todman, namely. And he ran a spread system with Gary Crowton as the offense coordinator. Got away from the run, really, for a lot of the season. Uh, with Mike Loxley in there this year running a more pro-style system, you would think that um, Ross, Pickett, and uh, freshman Wes Brown will also get some carries, that the running game should be a lot bigger part of the Terps offense than it was a year ago. Definitely. So with that said, what do you kind of think are, is a realistic expectation for this team this year? It's obviously a rebuilding year. 
again, just like it was last year. So the expectations aren't that high, especially with that inexperienced quarterback. Um, three and three and nine, I think, is a realistic expectation. Uh, I got winnable games against William and Mary, UConn, uh, Temple, and a couple ACC schools, uh, Boston College, namely, that they could win. I think three and nine is a fair guess where they could do this season. What's mm-hmm. your thoughts? I think I'm not that optimistic, to be honest. I think just with all the youth and the inexperience, it's going to be it's going to be an uphill battle all year. Um, I think it's possible that they could lose to William and Mary um, this Saturday. Um, I do think they'll they'll probably finish the season two and ten, kind of a repeat of last year. Um, I think they'll I think they will beat William and Mary, and I expect them to steal at least one ACC game. Um, I think they could beat Boston College, and obviously, like you mentioned, UConn and Temple are winnable games. But I'm not I'm not sure they will win those games. So I think two and ten. Uh, is a realistic expectation for this team. All right, well, that's all we have for you guys today. Uh, Be sure to check back on Friday, and we'll talk to you more about the William & Mary game.